This is a behind the scenes episode of how I made the rocket for the rocket knife. So if you're not into build videos like Jimmy Duresta style, stop here and just wait for tomorrow when a normal episode is coming out. So I'm gonna show how I did this rocket. It's a G size rocket, it's approximately 200 millimeters long. And to start with, we're gonna do the uh, nozzle, which is made from stainless steel 25 millimeter round stock. So I'm gonna start by squaring that. And then we're gonna drill a hole in it, which is six and a half millimeters large. That's because that's what you want the nozzle hole to be, which determines how much pressure you're gonna have in the rocket while it's burning. So you do a center drill first, then you step up to the larger drill size that you wanna use. So in this case, it's 6.5 millimeters. So I drilled that all the way through. Okay, so that's done. Now we're gonna do an angle on this because this is gonna be the inlet side. So I'm gonna do a 30 degree angle, which is gonna result in a 60 degree cone. And this is so you get the perfect acceleration of the gases exiting the nozzle hole. To do this, you set the angle on the top slide and then use this little tiny screw thing on the top to move the top slide back and forth and that's a, such a pain because it's so slow and it requires turning your wrist so many times that it hurts so bad. This is sped up like crazy because it takes so much time and you cannot cut really, you can't cut deep on this lathe. Uh, because it's stainless, it's really difficult to work in. It's really a pain. Aluminium is so easy, it's like cutting in butter compared to this. So now I'm just sanding it a little bit to make it smooth because we want no resistance for the gases exiting. Mmm, look at that fanciness. That looks really good. I like that. Okay, next thing. Now we're gonna do a slot for the O-ring and this is super important to get perfectly right. In this case it's 21.8 millimeters uh, in diameter and it needs to be 2.1 millimeters width if I remember correctly, it might be wrong. So this is super important because the O-ring needs the perfect pressure and it needs space to expand otherwise it's not gonna hold in the gases. There's plenty of online calculators to give you the perfect compression ratio and everything so just search for it if you're gonna add a o-ring to something that seems to be fitting pretty good all right so now i'm gonna shorten the stock so we get the perfect length for this whole nozzle and to do that we're just gonna use the cutoff thing and this takes a lot of time and everything gets really, really hot. So I use a lot of cooling fluid. Uh, and this is a carbide um, tipped um, cutting tool. So you have to flood it. You don't want to hit it while it's hot. Otherwise it can crack. So either you flood it or you don't use any coolant at all. Uh, I really want a quick change head because this is not currently working too good. It just would be nice to have that proper thing. So anyway, so now I'm setting the divergent angle of 12 degrees. So this is gonna be the outlet. And again, you have to go crazy slow. But this time I took a power drill so I can at least spare my wrist a little bit. Cause this is actually the second nozzle I made. The first one ended up in the woods somewhere uh, because the rocket flew off like crazy. Uh, and now actually I'm done. I'm using a file here to round the edges. You want a radii on the inlet and outlet on the nozzle hole. That's very important so the gases flow properly. And look at that, it turned out pretty good. Mm, shiny. And now I'm, to save some weight, we're gonna cut a slot and then do a 12 degree angle on the outside as well. So I remove as much material as possible and it looks really cool because it looks like, an, like a nozzle then. It looks like a freaking rocket, which is awesome. So it's important not to cut too deep, obviously, because you're gonna end up with a half a rocket nozzle then and that's not good. And this is uh, the exact opposite of turning on the inside, which is it's super, super super simple compared to the inside which is a pain so now I just 
you move it in a little bit and then you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until you get the whole length and uh, yeah look at that mm, shiny it looks really good these chips it's not chip breaking when you cut this shallow and these chips are really really dangerous they're super sharp so you need to have uh, gloves on and be really careful because they are like razors Wow, fancy look at that mm. so now we're done with the nozzle on the lathe we're gonna move over to the mill and drill some holes so we can hold the nozzle in place in the tube later but look how nice that turned out I'm gonna do some more finishing work on it later but uh, it's pretty good pretty good I'm really happy with that so to get the holes perfectly where they're supposed to be I'm using this paper template that I made really quickly in Adobe Illustrator and I'm just gonna use some uh, glue here some glue stick and then just wrap it around uh, and measure exactly so I get it in the proper position and then squeeze it into place I'm using four holes on the nozzle and three on the top because I want the top to explode way before the nozzle flies out because the nozzle is really a pain to make compared to the top piece so now I'm using the center drill to start with and yeah I'm searching for the middle position and just drill down and then I'm gonna switch over to a 3.2 millimeter um, drill bit uh, because I'm gonna tap this for M4 I wish I had a 3.3 um, a millimeter drill but hey I can't get everything in life uh, tapping stainless is a pain by the way everything in stainless is really a pain it, it looks really cool and it's super durable really specifically at high temperatures it performs really good that's why I use it as a nozzle top tip don't skimp on taps because if you break one inside of the piece you just made you're gonna be really angry get a set of three the ones that have the start middle and end taps and they're fantastic okay the nozzle is now done look at that mm, very fancy now we're gonna do a rocket body or casing it's a 28 millimeter uh, stainless steel tube which has a 25 millimeter inside diameter tube I don't have any support for the lathe to turn something this long which is horrendously bad but it did work you just have to take it super super easy and super light cuts and over and over and over again the reason why we're turning the inside is because this tube is seam welded so it has a bump on the inside we need to remove that otherwise the o-ring is not going to seal properly okay that's done now we're going to make the uh, bulkhead for the rocket which is a plug for the front and we're going to do this in aluminium so i have some aluminium round stock here it's 30 millimeters in diameter i think and it cuts like butter it's so easy to work with so I'm just turning it down to the proper length and the proper thickness or do you call that thickness the proper diameter anyway uh, it I mean it takes like a tenth of the time to work in this compared to the stainless so now I'm cutting the groove for the o-ring the exact same size and everything as on the nozzle testing the o-ring on it mm, slide on perfect super nice the round stock I used for this was a little long you shouldn't really work this far out on a piece but since it was aluminium and I took it pretty easy uh, it turned out fine so now I parted the uh, top off now I flipped the piece so I can clean up the uh, top side and uh, because I I want stuff to look fancy and what am I doing now oh, okay I'm uh, filleting the uh, <laughs> putting a fillet on the uh, outside cap and I'm, um, yeah I'm confused now I'm gonna drill the holes just like the uh, nozzle I use a paper template and I measured three times uh, each hole so you make sure it's perfect when drilling and tapping the best order of business is to use a center drill so you don't get the wander off and then do the normal drill and then put the tap in the chuck and lower it down and start the tapping then you can finish the tap by hand that will ensure that you get a nice straight tapping oh look at that it's done I think that turned out pretty darn good 
Okay, we need to drill some holes in the rocket body or the, what do you call that, in the rocket casing. That was it, yes. Okay, same technique. You just put the paper templates and these are made for 28 millimeters outside diameter thing now. So everything should match, uh, match up really good. So in, now we just need to drill the holes really just doing uh, four millimeter drills and just there's a lot of holes this is so much easier to drill i don't even need cooling and if i did add cooling i think the paper would fall off i'm not 100 percent sure so double checking against the nozzle to see if uh, it fits and yeah it looks uh, pretty darn good so doing the other side it's three holes instead of four so you can't mix it up so everything is going to fit real nicely we are very close to being finished. All we have to do now is assemble the whole thing. Look at all the pieces. They look really good. I did sand the edges a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna slot straight together. Screw in the screws and look at that. Mm, good job. On the next behind the scenes episode, we're gonna do the sled. So make sure you keep an eye out for that and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.